of the icebergs, um, that the preparatory processes are always more important than the meeting uh, itself. Um, and the preparatory process as well as the follow-up process. So the two uh, before and after processes are uh, the ones that will determine the success of the meeting. And in the case of this conference, it won't be different. And I would like to thank our dear partners, the government of the Netherlands, that together with the government of Tajikistan and the UN have made sure that uh, we have we have and are still having a strong preparatory process uh, for uh, this meeting, uh, for the, the conference. And you know that several meetings have been taking place in the course of the last 15 months. Um, uh, and the objective is for them to allow and to lead for a better meeting, a stronger meeting that leads to action on the ground at country level. Uh, our SWA partners, you who are attending this meeting, um, you um, have repeatedly said that in order to achieve change, there are at country level, there are three areas, three prioritary areas of action. One of them being pol political engagement at the highest level, at heads of state or head of government level. We all know that without political will at the highest level of power, the change, the acceleration, and the follow-up to the meeting that we so desperately need will not happen. So we want and we will mobilize partners together with many of you towards ensuring that heads of state and heads of government uh, not only attend the meeting, but commit to progress and to ambitious actions on water sanitation and hygiene at country level. The other key element is accountability. What makes or breaks international gatherings, be it our UN Water Conference or the previous Oceans Conference or the COPs is the commitments and the follow-up to commitments, the link between words and actions. So follow-up to the commitments and the, the water action agenda is absolutely key uh, in this case. Uh, SWA's mutual accountability mechanism is, as you know, a tested tool to ensure follow-up to and accountability in terms of the commitments made on 6.1 and 6.2. So we think, and we and many of our partners have been mentioning it, that it is important to marry the mutual accountability mechanism with the water action agenda. And uh, the, of course, the man is ready to ensure follow-up to any commitment on 6.1 and 6.2. And obviously I'm referring to the SDG targets that are tabled uh, ahead or during the, the conference. And at last but not least, our partners are convinced that using human rights as a basis uh, and as a guide will help us in putting the furthest behind first, but also in putting um, people's people and their needs at the center of discussions. Human rights uh, are uh, 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 de pre or determine uh, or impose legal obligations on member states. Um, they contain a normative content that predetermines how states must act in if they want to realize these human rights. But also human rights, as you know, also impose responsibilities to respect this legal framework on non-state actors, including the private sector. So uh, we will come to New York next month, uh, hopefully with clear messages uh, that bring these different dimensions together. And we hope also that all our partners will come with messages to the meeting uh, that reflect these three, uh, these three important aspects of political leadership, accountability, and putting human rights at, um, at, um, at the forefront. Okay. So this, with all of this in mind, today's webinar will focus on number one, 
something you all want, explaining what the conference entails. Second, outlining opportunities for country teams to engage both before, during, but also after the conference, including engaging with ministers, with heads of state, heads of government, with members of parliament, tabling commitments under the mutual accountability mechanism that can also contribute to the water action agenda, and then working on a concrete follow-up plan. And third, give you a chance to ask questions, get answers from the, co uh, from the conference co-hosts, from the organizers, the co-conveners, the co-chair of Interactive Dialogue One on water sanitation, hygiene, health, and human rights, as well as from our, um, uh, from our uh, SWA uh, secretariat. Very good. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our speakers. The first one being Miss Evita, sorry Evita, Miss Evita Rosenberg, um, uh, who, who has a background in global conflict and international uh, relations. She's now a policy advisor to uh, the UN 2023 Water Conference at the Dutch Ministry for Foreign Affairs. And she will talk about the structure of the conference and what the co-hosts expect to get out of it. Over to you, Evita, and thanks again for being here uh, with us. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katarina, and thanks everyone also for being here and for, for you for organizing this, this, uh, this webinar. Um, saying that we only have 35 days left always makes us uh, feel a bit nervous at the mission. I'm calling in from, uh, from New York, from the Dutch mission. And uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. We are very much looking forward to uh, in receiving all of you next month in New York for the UN Water Conference. And it's also uh, for the Netherlands, together with Tajikistan, such an honor to organize or co-host this first U dedicated UN conference on water in nearly 50 years. And overall, our ambition is that this cannot be just another conference. So for that reason, we have had this whole preparatory process and we're now talking a lot about what's going to happen on the 25th of March. How we do we make sure that this was not just another conference and how do we make sure that we truly united the world for water action. So let me go over a few slides to provide you some brief information. I'm sure all of you have a lot of questions. So I'm just going to try to keep it brief. Um, so about two years ago, as most of you might know, Tajikistan, together with UN Water and UN Desta, the Secretariat of the Conference, laid down the principles for the conference uh, beyond that vision of uniting the world for water action. We want the conference, wanted the conference to be inclusive in terms of the conference progress uh, process, but also in terms of leaving no one behind. We need every voice at the table, all the voices involved in decision making and also in that accountability that Katarina referred to earlier on. We also want to make sure that the conference is action oriented. As I mentioned before, we want to make sure that this is not just another conference with those dialogues and plenary sessions, interventions, but we present to the world at the end the water action agenda because the outcome of the conference is a non negotiated outcome document. And then as co hosts, we also uh, uh, provide, want to provide the world with the water action agenda, which is from by all of us. But I'll tell a bit more on, about that later on and also cross-sectoral, making sure that we mobilize all the other sectors outside of our own what sometimes water bubble because water is so much interlinked to all the, the SDGs. So on the next slide. I will speak a bit about the, the, the setup for the pro or the program so far for the for the water conference. So the conference will start on Wednesday, 22nd of March and the final days, of course, on the Friday. If you would go to the website for the water conference and there's a link on top, there's already a first outline of the program, which includes the opening, uh, the, the formal opening ceremony and also the closing. Then throughout the days, there are the plenary sessions during which member states can give their interventions in the General Assembly and accredited stakeholders can be observers to this in the General Assembly. Then there also are the five interactive dialogues. There are side events running in parallel. There are special events. 
and their cultural, all these cultural elements and more. There's the SG action zone, SG media zone. We have a studio. There will be a, a marathon run by Mina Guli together with everyone who is going to be in New York. Um, and that will be your 200th marathon. There's a film festival and all of that also under the umbrella of this New York Water Week, which is basically not much more than a platform provided by the city of New York and the Dutch government for all the overflow of exciting activities that cannot um, take place at the UN headquarters itself. And then there's also the closing on the Friday. I will speak a bit more about the interactive dialogues and the special events. But first off, I wanna say a few words about the side events because I can imagine that most of you are very curious and maybe anxious to learn about the side events. So there are the side events at the UN headquarters and there are side events taking place virtually or outside of the UN headquarters. We received an unprecedented amount or DESA received an unprecedented amount of almost 1300 side event applications. I believe there are 1,270. So, and my colleague of DESA will probably say a few more, more words about this, but together with DESA working very hard to provide everyone with the latest information uh, uh, as soon as possible on which side events will be accommodated at the UN headquarters. Those, take, those that uh, submitted their side event for virtual or outside have all received information last Monday. So over to the last, uh, next slide. which is about the interactive dialogues, just giving you a brief overview. So this week is all about getting the information about the side events out and on the program. Last week was all as a co-host about who, which member states will become the co-chairs of the interactive dialogues. You can read this off the slide, but for the Water for Health uh, interactive dialogue, the co-chairs uh, will be the United Kingdom and the Dominic, uh, Dominican Republic. And for your information, in preparation of these interactive dialogues, there was an informal preparatory working group for each of the dialogues during which the background papers were prepared also with inputs from the different stakeholders. And they also had the opportunity to provide with recommendations for speakers and moderators. Over to the next slide, please. Thank you. So, in terms of special events, you will also, and I very much recommend you to go to the website uh, with the latest program. At my final slide, there's a QR code to make everyone's lives easier, just so to, that you easily can scan the code. But there are um, four special events taking place in parallel. On the website, you can also see the specific dates and times. And, after, and, and one on collaboration for water resilience, reducing inequalities and the human rights, implementing the human rights, one on the economics of water and one on water leadership. We'll make sure that the, you will receive the slides also accordingly. So you can also have a look at different parties that are involved in organizing these special events. And the special events are organized by the major, uh, major stakeholder groups. Next slide, please. Then the water action agenda, as I mentioned before, is the uh, one of the main outcomes for the co-host and the secretary of the conference of the water conference because the at the end of the conference we'll have a non-negotiated outcome document, the summary document, and the water action agenda, where the vision has always been of the co-host that over the past two years, during all the stepping stone events, going from Cairo to Senegal to Stockholm to Dushanbe and so on and so on. Um, to receive all the inputs and the stories from all over the world, what is needed to uh, accelerate on true progress related to water related goals and uh, problems. And then presenting, we have the conference for three days at the end during the closing, we will present the water action agenda back to the world. But for that, we also need clear commitments and actions because the water action agenda is not something of the co host or secretary, the water action agenda is of all of us. And I'm seeing at the moment that there are really great coalitions of private sector parties, member states, NGOs, CSOs working together on voluntary commitments. So here's also the, the QR code. The platform to register your commitments is open. And I would very much recommend you to uh, look for coalitions that are already working on, on, on commitments 
or uh, 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 identify new commitments and upload them to the website. The sooner the better, of course, there's no deadline for this water action agenda because it's an open platform. But of course, the sooner the better because we as the co-host also would like to uh, provide certain spotlights to great initiatives. So on the uh, next slide, please. And that was my, my quick introduction on the latest information for the water conference. Here is the uh, our website for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands. There's a different email, uh, or sorry, email address. There's a different email address also for DESA for any questions. Do reach out to me or to us if you have any questions. And also do have a look at the website because every day there is more information because we're moving very fast in our final month. And I would also very much recommend you to sign up for the newsletter if not done so already to receive the final information. Thank you so much. Super, uh, Evita. Muchas gracias por tu, por tu intervención. Y por thank haber... you, Evita. Thank you for your participation. And thank you for sharing this information and for sharing with us so many details, so important details about the conference. As my colleagues have already mentioned in the dialogue box, you will have uh, Evita's presentation and the rest of the presentations will be available in the website in the web page of our alliance. Uh, so now we're going to move. Of course, if you have any questions for Evita, please do not hesitate to write them in the corresponding dialogue box. And I will be uh, transferring those to the uh, pertinent speakers. Now I'm going to leave the floor to Muyatwa Sitali, who comes from our secretary, and uh, he's going to tell us about the opportunities that uh, uh, would we would like to call your attention on while you are preparing for the conference, in particular when it comes to the preparation at the national level. Also, I would like to ask you if you, your ministers, your heads of state or heads of government are already uh, confirmed to attend the conference, I would like you to uh, highlight it in the chat box if you can. So, Sitali, the floor is yours to tell us about the opportunities uh, available at the national teams in order to prepare for the meeting before and during the conference. And maybe you want to tell us about the follow up of the conference. Thank you so much, uh, Katarina. Thank you. Thank you and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm going to speak English because I cannot uh, speak Spanish um, for uh, long. Uh, thank you, Katarina. Once again, I was just saying that I will speak in English because I can't be as fluent as Katarina is in Spanish. Um, we will, um, I will share a few uh, points about the country level engagement. We're really excited um, about this conference. And as Katarina has noted, our sector ministers meeting last year was already um, on the road to, to New York. And as she also mentioned, their preparation or the preparatory process is often more important and bears a lot of fruit uh, such that the meeting itself is the cherry on the cake. Now here are a few suggestions about how you could engage or how you could consolidate um, your engagement at country level. Number one is to coordinate around the country delegation um, therefore, we are, we are encouraging partners uh, to do meetings or bilaterals with other country delegations and stakeholders, uh, and, and that these processes could be government-led, bringing in different types of stakeholders so that there could be a multi-stakeholder approach to identifying what the key priorities, commitments, and game changers that your country would like to put forward. Um, we are suggesting that the ministers, um, there should be briefings for ministers, of course, to let them know about what the meeting is, uh, is about and also to help prepare them in terms of where they might be able to make engagements. Um, and so uh, briefing ministers and other high level representatives on the main topics or issues to address in, the inter in their interventions during the conference is really key. And we propose that this should already be happening at country level. 
we are suggesting also that you can use the SWA key messages to draft your uh, main talking points for the ministers and other delegates to the meeting, including using these key um, uh, messages to prepare briefing notes for the for the for the ministers so that they can come to the meeting more they could come to the meeting better informed i think the link to the key messages was already put in the chat but and angie has just put it again so you could download that document to help you in terms of some of the framing and uh some of the key messages um we are also suggesting that partners should map side events of interest and coordinate who will attend once the list of side events becomes available uh, it would be really important if you could know how you could spread across and get the most out of this conference but also obviously in your own delegation you might know how to plan your participation we also suggest that you nominate high level speakers to speak in SWA partner convened side events when needed we already have um, some invitations that have been sent to some of the events that SWA is doing uh, with other partners. And if your uh, minister or other delegates are being requested to speak, we are very keen to work with you around that. Uh, a really important point that Evita also mentioned is the tabling of commitment um, for the water action agenda. We would suggest a really strong alignment with the mutual accountability mechanism in part so that we could be able to follow up once these commitments are registered both in the water action agenda and also in the mutual accountability mechanism. This provides us a really good way to be able to follow up post the meeting and even include them in the global report on uh, accountability, which we very likely will be doing in the course of next year. So um, we're encouraging partners to look at what you already have, um, how you could strengthen those commitments, make them more ambitious and smarter, report on them, and also um, any of those that are revised or new ones, make sure that they're included in the water action agenda and also in the in the mutual accountability mechanism um, uh, side of our, of our website. Um, that said, we're also working with different countries, especially the priority countries, on very specific ways that you could use your areas of focus to prepare for this meeting. Um, we'd also be looking for some bilaterals with some of the ministers that uh, will be in, in New York. So if you could let us know um, the delegation that's going to New York, your minister or your head of state, please let us know. And you can already put that information in the chat. Katarina, thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you, Sitali. Thank you for your presentation. And I will leave the floor now to another colleague of ours, Neil Dot from Aquafed, who is coordinating the um, the task team for the preparations of the conference. He is going to be presenting the main actions that they are carrying out at the moment with their partners. If you're planning to have any side event or any other type of meeting, please do not hesitate to note it in the chat box. Neil, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm also struggle with Spanish. Uh, to be honest, I sometimes find English quite difficult as well, So, but I will proceed in English as best as I can. Um, it's great that you're, there's more than 100 of you online. That's brilliant. Um, so I uh, just wanted to, if we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So yes, my role is is uh, kind of leader, lead coordinator of the SWA task force on the 2023 conference. And as you can imagine we've been quite active particularly behind the scenes actually so far trying to make sure that the sessions uh and the interactive dialogues and the special events and, and the side events will also will all reflect the SWA's messages and I, and I think uh overall as a team with the secretariat we've done a, a good job actually um first of all I'd like to point you to the key messages because that's one of the first things we we worked on and Angie has already posted the key messages for the conference in the chat. I really strongly urge you when you have a moment before the conference, if you're going to have a look at those, they, don't worry, it's not many pages, it's just two pages maximum. And the messages are very sharp and they're very focused. 
And I want to thank the Secretariat actually for the work they've done on those because they're very, very focused on, on the things we need to say. So please do have a look at the key messages. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the second uh, a, a kind of piece of work we've tried to to launch, but I think it's it's still ongoing, is we've tried to, as a partnership, to coordinate all the activities that um, us as partners and others will be doing at the event. And for that, we actually have a form that, uh, again, that Angie produced some time ago. Um, I think we'll, we know the special events already. We, we know about the interactive dialogues. I think once we get final confirmation of the side events and which ones have been accepted, um, it would be a very, very useful uh, task if, if I would say essential actually if you can if you're involved in a side event to fill in this form that um that I think we will be in the chat because it's very important that we we know where each other are and what we're doing because I feel this conference it is going to be huge and there's going to be I, I suspect some kind of duplication like we see all the time we try to avoid it uh, in some of the events that are going on. So, um, and in some side events, I'm sure there'll be people saying the same messages at the same time, right? So we need to try and as much as we can coordinate what, what's happening so we we know where, where each other are. Um, so please, please do that as well. Um, the next thing I wanted to to tell you about quickly was the, the high level events that the SWA is convening. I'll just tell you what, uh, just a few points now, and I'm sure if you've got questions, we can we can answer them. The first one is I wanted to talk about is actually the, the last one of these three bullets. It's the mutual accountability event, and it's called Justice Begins Here with Accountability. This is gonna be held at the UN Foundation, so outside of the main building. Uh, I think that's correct. And that will be a uh, date is to be confirmed yet. That's going to be an invitation only event. I believe that steering committee members will receive their invitation soon. This is very much focused on the SWA mutual accountability mechanism. Again, very important because there's many of us, including me, who strongly believe in the MAM, uh, the MAM, the, the mutual accountability mechanism, believe it's a very, very good task. Uh, sorry, a good uh, for facility and platform already on accountability and it has already shown a lot of results so I think for those of you in the audience now um it, your, your task your job is to really think about or, or tell the secretariat of any significant commitments that could be showcased by your minister or high level representative at this event okay so have a think about that because that's not you know there's those details aren't set in stone yet so there's time to kind of get your example into that event the second one is the ministerial meeting on governance and finance with the World Bank, another one that's invitation only. Um, this is a high level meeting under the title of Achieving SDG 6, a call for systems change. And it's going to be convened by the World Bank and the SWA. Hopefully it's going to be the start of a series of events like this. I understand that this particular meeting in New York is going to be um, focused on east and southern africa all right but we expect there's going to be more meetings like this between you know 2023 and 2024 so that's great that's a very very important partnership that the swa has with the world bank and finally it's the heads of states compact event with the government of netherlands unicef and the irc <coughs> excuse me another kind of invitation only event and this is about um trying to identify countries that could be wash compact champions and these are again the countries that are, are well in uh, advancing progress on, on wash so so look out for those as well um okay just two minutes left for me i promise finally there's two i mean with side events we know that we'll get a confirmation of those any day now i can't remember which day i said it was um special events also now special there's four special events as i think you know um and we're focusing on three and four because this is where the swa is involved in either directly or indirectly in in, you know, in the case of special events through me um the special event three is called reducing inequalities implementing human rights um if you haven't seen the concept notes on the website already for this one i advise you not to look at it don't look at it. And the reason I say that it's because it's a classic example of a document that's been pulled apart and had words and corrections by many different players where we got to about version 19 
before we actually finished it that showed you how long it took in three of three it took us three weeks to end to finalize the concept note which is typical of the way this set to work sometimes however i will draw your attention to two of the objectives that i think you need to know for this special event the first one is to promote game changer actions that accelerate human rights and the reduction of inequalities and marginalization in the second half of the water action decade that's important because I think we all need to remember that this conference that we're all going to, or some of us are going to next month, is about the second half of the decade. It, we must remember that, right? So that's the first point. The second point or second objective for this that I want to tell you about is that this is about showing states that implementing and guaranteeing human rights and meaningly, meaningfully involving youth, women, and indigenous peoples uh, that is the way you re reduce inequalities faster and more effectively and more sustainably. Okay, so special event three is about reducing inequalities that are felt primarily by youth, women and indigenous peoples. And it's about showing the solutions actually youth, women and indigenous peoples have to accelerate SDG six. And it's trying to do that through the kind of the, uh, using human rights basis for, for, for doing that. So this event, special event three is not about raising the, the impacts and the, the plight and the concerns of you know, the negative impacts of people, of, of youth, women and indigenous people and water rights defenders. It's not about showing what happened and, 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 and it, it's about the solutions actually for them and the solutions they have. That's really important focus. We must remember that. Special event four, I think hopefully someone else will be able to, to, to explain that more, but that's about leadership. And again, you know, leadership being a very important kind of uh, a point for the SWA. It's something we, a message we give very strongly. I'll stop there. There's lots more I could tell you, but I'll leave it for questions if that's okay. Um, but just remember that special event three is about answers. Okay, It's not about saying, yes, people are not getting their human rights fulfilled. We know it's about, well, how can we specifically, what actions can be taken to reduce inequalities and implement the human right to, uh, to water and sanitation for all? Katerina, back to you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Neil. Uh, always great to, to see you and to, to listen to you. Uh, and thank you for such a, 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 a clear and great presentation. Um, now we have a Q&A &A session. Uh, we, have, uh, we are blessed and honored and pleased and happy uh, to have such fantastic resource people. We have Evita Rosenberg uh, again from the Netherlands. We have Yasmin Ben Sharif from UNDESA. We have uh, Anne Thomas uh, UNICEF from UNICEF. Uh, we have Paul Devril from FCDO. We have again Neil Dot uh, from um, the SWA task team. And we have Angie Saleh from uh, the SWA secretariat. Um, I have several questions for all of you, but before asking my own questions, uh, I would like to bring to your attention some questions that were raised in the chat. And um, uh, there are some that are very clearly aimed at some of you. Uh, the others are more generic and I ask you to please speak on them uh, as you might deem fit. Um, so there was a question about uh, Evita, both Evita, but also Citali, you were talking about commitments, right? And there was a question about the voluntary nature of the commitments. Are they uh, voluntary or not? How do we follow up on the commitments? Will they just be dumped? These are my words. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a dark room and will somebody close the door or will there be uh, any follow up to them? Then there was some concern that we are calling this uh, conference the water conference. What about sanitation? What about hygiene? Will they also be on the map or not? Um, there was somebody asking a question about visas. I'm not sure that I think this is a question more for the US State Department than for you, but maybe uh, you and Desa, you have something to say about this. Um, somebody mentioned the importance of sharing good practices because sharing good practices will incentivize action from others. How can this be done? 
Uh, and there were lots of questions about side events. Um, number one, um, how can we participate in a side event? Will the side events be also uh, virtual uh, and live streamed? And there was also a question, since you, Evita, mentioned the huge number um, of applications, right, for side events and the fact that uh, not all of them, I think that only approximately 10% was ac were accepted. Were the people uh, whose events were not accepted, were they notified? Will they be notified uh, or, or not? Um, then um, another question um, uh, on side events, and maybe you could uh, answer that question, Yasmin, how many were accepted? Uh, and what are the main times of each day where side events happen? Um, and also in terms of the level of participation of the meeting, what are you expecting? How many heads of state, heads of government have already confirmed their attendance? How many ministers? And how does this, how does this conference compare with other UN conferences? So maybe I will stop my questions now, for now, and I will come back and they hand over the floor to uh, uh, to the resource people. Uh, Yasmin, can I start with you? Yes, thank you so much. I'll see if I can start my video. I think it may be blocked. I think that was the case this morning. Oh, no, maybe it's starting now. So um, just to say, so the Secretariat received about 1,300 uh, requests for side events. That's a combination of inside, outside, and virtual. Um, if your outside or virtual side event was approved, then you should have been notified at this point. Um, for inside side events, the Secretariat is aiming to inform um, all approved inside side events by next week. Um, the reason for the delay is, you know, us doing them as possible to accommodate as many as possible. We had many very strong um, submissions across the board. Uh, of course, space is most limited inside, so that's uh, something we've been working diligently on to accommodate as many as possible. As far as participation, I can say that that's something that's been um, encouraged across the board to uh, mobilize as much head of state representation as possible, and um, member states have also been notified to make the water conference a priority. Uh, in comparison to other conferences and other uh, other events. This one has, I would say, received unprecedented uh, attention and enthusiasm, which um, I think is very exciting in the lead up to the conference. I think we can all be very proud of, and I think it's something that I think will bode quite well for the conversations that we're able to have in March um, and the actions that we're able to, to register. So um, I believe that, please let me know if I've left off some questions. I know there were quite a few. Um, but I, I think I hopefully addressed the big picture of it, but please let me know. Thanks. There was a question about Yasmin, how do people participate in uh, inside events? Sure, so for side event participation, there's some important things to keep in mind. So for outside and virtual side events, anyone can participate. Um, you do not need to register to participate for an outside side event or a virtual side event, but it is up to the organizers of the side event to um, to determine the participation process. So whether a side event will be open or closed will be up to the discretion of those organizers. For inside side events, participants must be registered to the conference. Um, this is uh, logistics, um, a matter of logistics. So um, that will be the case for inside side events. Um, as far as whether it'll be an open, uh, open Q&A, whether it'll be uh, one where they'll be speaking interventions, that's up to the discretion of the side event organizers. So um, these, this should be made public on those side event websites, which will be linked to the program once everything is finalized. That was going to be my next question. How do people know uh, whether a side event is inside the UN Secretariat, outside, online, and how to participate? Everything will be online. There will be a, a website that is linked to the main uh, conference's website, and people can find that information. Will you create an app? That would be a good thing for us to carry in our phones. 
while there. Yes, there are. There is talk of creating a few different tools. I think some that are maybe especially geared towards youth to make sure that youth are really able to navigate the conference. I think easily and understand where youth voices are being best amplified. What I will say, and I'll share in the chat here, and I apologize, I'm a bit sick. I think you can really hear it, but. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what I will say is I'll share, there are a few pages on the web page, on the overall conference website that I think are really useful for those updates and to be able to navigate those events. That's the program which is being updated routinely. Documentation now has the information note which was just published. So I'll share that page as well. And that's where you'll find kind of those latest updates with a lot of that important logistics information. And I also encourage everyone to uh, sign up for the newsletter for the latest uh, updates and to keep in touch with the different and maps and any apps that'll come out. Thanks, Come Yasmin. Here. Thanks, thanks so much. Uh, I will give now the floor to Evita, then to Nils. Evita. Perfect. Thank you, Katarina. And also thank you, Yasmin, for taking off, I think, about three questions on the on the long list. So that's much appreciated. Let me speak to the, um, the, the first question on the water action agenda and the voluntary commitments, because I saw that in the chat and maybe I wasn't, I wasn't clear myself. So the deliverables of the water conference are formally as mandated in the resolution, a non-negotiated outcome document, which is basically a summary document of the past three days. That's one. As co-hosts, together with the secretary of the conference, we decided this is not enough. We need to do more. We need to step up our game. But what can we do within the modalities resolution that set the conference and which was um, adopted by the member states? And with that, we found the opportunity to have this water action agenda, which is that online platform for which I shared the link filled with voluntary commitments. So hopefully I, I made the distinction there and answer the question, but happy to hear from you, Katrina, if, if I need to add in some additional information. On the second one uh, was particularly on the worries whether sanitation wasn't would not be addressed sufficiently because we're talking here about a water conference. And I can wholeheartedly say I'm a WASH champion myself, uh, worked in WASH now for a few years, and sanitation is most certainly core and part of the conference. Um, you will see this in, well, Neil uh, referred to it in the special event, but it is also very much mentioned in the interactive dialogue number one, which is uh, access to wash, which includes sanitation and the human rights to water and sanitation. I don't have the full list now of all the side events that are going to be accepted, but I do know for sure that there's going to be wash side events. So I'm personally not worried about that and I'm on your side uh, in this regard. Thank Did I so cover much. most, Katrina? <laughs> I think so, Evita. And if people feel that you didn't or that Yasmin didn't, please complain. Please complain and let's have them let's you. accountable. <laughs> let's put it in practice. Good. Neil, over to you. Thank you, Katerina. Um, so I just wanted to make two or three points, actually. <clears throat> so my plea to... Yasmin, and I'm sorry, Yasmin, I'm not picking on you. It's just because you are the representative of UN for the UN DESA today. And if anything, I just have a message that I think you've already heard me say, which is I, I just heard that there might be money spent on an app. What I think this conference really needs is to make sure that panelists who cannot come to the conference or potential speakers who would have a really excellent contribution to make that we facilitate first, because otherwise the discussions in New York are gonna be, I think, quite limited because there's a lot of people who could make highly impactful interventions are not going to be able to come. And we are already experiencing that in our organization of Special Event 3, because at the moment we're being told that you can't have speakers joining online. And I really, really urge you and Dessa to to think about that again because the the irony is that my event is about reducing inequalities and yet we're not even able to allow women indigenous peoples and and young people from around the world to patch themselves in to to get into the event so if there is funds available please 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 make it so that a everyone can see that special and B, that they can actually 
contribute and join in because I'm not having special event three. I'm one of the organizers and it's not going to be three hours of speeches. Okay. It's meant for everyone to have their voice. All right. So that's, that's the first point. The second point on commitments, you know, there's a lot of questions in the chat about, well, you know, the water action agenda, you know, who's going to monitor it. And, you know, it's, it's another process. It's not going to be monitored. There's a reality here that there's not going to be any, any independent monitoring. We have to, in a way, self-monitor. So my, my suggestion would be make a commitment to the water action agenda and then make it also using the SWA's mutual accountability mechanism because you've got a ready-made mechanism there in place with its own inbuilt system of accountability. It does what it says in the label. The final point is, uh, and this goes to a lady who's made a couple of points, I think on behalf of disabilities, I think, I think the name is Rishi Keta. Uh, forgive me if I, I couldn't read it. Anyway, if you are unable to get to New York, but as you say, you want to have your voice heard, go to the conference website for the special events, because that, that's the one process I know best. There will be a list of the organizers, I believe, and contacts for them. Talk to us now and tell what examples you think we should raise these special events because we are working on these details right now. Nothing is set. Now is exactly the right time for all of you to think if you want an, a, a case study or an example resolution that we can present at a special event, then my door is wide open for special events. Thank, Thank you, you, Katharina. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Niels. Um, now, uh, there were uh, also, I think that it would be interesting since we have Paul uh, Deverell and, and Thomas here, um, if you could tell us a little bit more about the structure of Dialogue One, of Interactive Dialogue One. How will it look like? What are we? What is an interactive dialogue? Uh, what are we hoping to get uh, out of it? Um, and how can we use it um, strategically to influence high-level decision maker uh, uh, makers who will be present uh, at um, at the conference? Okay, um, Anne, are you there? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, uh, Paul, why don't you start off and I can I can chip in. OK, so, um, OK, the other the other missing element of this particular interactive dialogue is our, our colleague from the government of the Dominican Republic. Yeah, so there's two co-chairs on the this first uh, interactive dialogue. That's the UK Dominican Republic and UNICEF is providing their executive director to moderate the whole thing. Yeah, it's uh, now this is the first of these interactive dialogues. It's in room four, uh, if anyone's interested, and I hope you are. Uh, it's on the first day and it's between 10 and 1, 10 o'clock in the morning and 1 p.m. So three hours is quite a long time. Um, it's my understanding that what's going to happen is that um, the co-chairs represented at ministerial level, ours is going to be Lord Goldsmith. He's responsible for water. Uh, are going to kick the thing off. There's going to be introductions. The uh, There's going to be a moderated panel discussion. The panel will be four or five individuals uh, regionally selected. So they're representing different parts of the world. Um, and we hope also to have uh, multiple sectors and multiple constituencies somehow reflected there as well. There are also a couple of extras who are discutants. Uh, as far as I can see, they're people who are maybe more familiar with the subject area and again, we hope they would be able to represent kind of missing, potentially missing parts of the dialogue. Someone mentioned sanitation, hygiene, whatever. Uh, rest assured, that won't be missing in this one. Not with UNICEF and, and FCDO there, I'm sure. Um, the panel is going to probably respond to the questions, the sort of questions which have been addressed in the concept note developed by WHO and UNICEF. Um, we would like it actually to focus on leadership, accountability, governance, systems, uh, and inclusion, The uh, because those are the things which make things happen. And maybe if there's an additional one, collaboration, which is what this is all about, then starts the debate. And this is where it gets a bit more juicy. The, um, uh, the debate is a great opportunity to do a number of things. Firstly, to start linking out with some of the side meetings, because the side meetings are hugely important as well. And sometimes some of the stuff in a side meeting needs to be amplified. Yeah, uh, even before that side meeting has happened in some cases. The second thing is we're looking for examples of transformative action. So there's no space here for a case study. 
but there is certainly space for a two minute interjection, which is probably if pitched well is better than a case study. And that's where there's going to be some interaction, the interaction as well. This is not just member states standing up and talking. This is going to be a uh, private sector, civil society. Yeah, the learn, in other words, the different constituencies of SWA should all be represented in that meeting because you all need to be represented. Otherwise, we won't achieve collaborative progress. Um, and it should be focused on actions, highlighting actions that can make a difference. Hugely, hugely important. Um, we'll wrap after three. We'll wrap up after three hours. But what we'll also do is start bringing these examples together and to start assembling a coalition, if you like, a coalition of stakeholders who want to work together to really push this for the rest of the year and the rest of the water decade. And so this is going to be really, really interesting because we haven't received much instruction on that because we're focusing on the actual three hours. But this is not just an event. This is the beginning of a process. Um, Anne, do you want to fill in the gaps? And also, you might have noticed, Anne, I've just sent you an email saying, that's me anyway, because I'd like to talk to you about this in a bit more detail. <laughs> that's but a good timing. Um, thanks, Paul. And maybe just to um, chip in a little bit on the, the development of the concept note, because that's where UNICEF and WHO really put a lot of input into the development of the concept note that would help provide input and structure to the um, the interactive dialogue. So Paul shared a little bit about how that's going to look, but um, just to cover some of the content and um, what were important considerations and in, in, you know, contributing to the guiding questions and recommendations for the session. Um, one, you know, sanitation was was very well covered in the concept note. Uh, myself, I'm the global lead for sanitation at UNICEF and we had Kate Medlicott as the global lead on sanitation at WHO were part of the, the co-drafters. So we definitely um, ensured that that was covered. Um, but what we did want to come out with with this document is, you know, clear recommendations to government that could then be tracked. And uh, that's reflected. If you look at the concept note that I've, I've shared the link to, you'll find a lot of recommendations, strong recommendations, really focused at a system strengthening level for governments to take away. And then also some just some suggestions of actions that we can track, like um, government targets, uh, accountability frameworks for government, uh, financing arrangements, et cetera. So there are some very specific suggestions that we put into those guiding um, questions and recommendations that we're hoping will be discussed um, at the conference and in the dialogue so that we come away with something trackable. Um, and I just wanted to say, I think because, uh, you know, there is so much debate on the commitments right now and what's going to be tracked. You know, I think it's a great opportunity um, to be thinking about how to define a good commitment. There really doesn't exist, as far as I, I can tell, any guidance right now on what constitutes a, a solid commitment. So I think that's an area where, you know, this forum and SWA could be very instrumental in helping to develop some guidance to countries on what constitutes solid commitment. Because if you look at the website right now under the water action agenda, you'll you'll find that you know the commitments span a really wide range of levels. And if we're looking at tracking things, it would be good to you know be comparing um, apples apples to apples. Um, so I think that's that's something that we hope will be discussed in the session, and that we can really press governments to think about what are meaningful um, commitments that we can track over time. So I think you'll find in the um, the concept note there's a number of guiding questions that um, focus on, um, you know, like data gaps, um, how can we build champions for water sanitation hygiene, what kind of policies uh, for wash and wastewater treatment are required to drive action, investment, and accountability, um, what kind of um, role can development partners in the private sector play in skill building and institutional strengthening, how can we work across government ministries and departments to optimize wash investments, um, et cetera. So there's a couple of those that we've put in to, to help structure some of the conversations and to come out of this with something um, concrete and measurable that we can we can follow on um, with governments in coming years. So maybe um, those are the, the main points from my side. Back to you, Katerina. Sure. And thank you so much. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, thanks also to you, uh, uh, to you, Paul. I have some more questions. One question that I wanted to direct to, or one or two 
So there were comments on how SWA has been working at the regional level in preparation of the meeting, that's number one. There have been also questions about sponsorship of participants. Um, there has been another, another bigger question by our dear friend, Robert Botts, uh, on 6.1, 6.2, SDG 6, uh, the, the, the remit or scope of work of SWA. And, uh, and you asked me for my opinion. You asked for everyone's opinion. So anyone is uh, welcome to speak about it. And I agree with you. I tend, well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm talking as Katarina or as if CEO. As a CEO of SWA, I do what our steering committee tells us to do. But maybe that's not what you want to hear. I have, I must say that I have sympathy towards expanding our borders and engaging, uh, engaging with other targets of um, SDG 6. Also because uh, we want, because of the extreme interlinkages between 6.1, 6.2 and the others, the way in which 6.1 and 6.2 are impacted by the others um, and how the others are a prerequisite even for achieving 6.1 and 6.2. So as, a, as an independent individual, which I am not, uh, I would say that I'm more than happy to look into uh, into the links between uh, between and the, uh, uh, between the different uh, the different targets. But it's also true that our steering committee has tried to expand a little bit our scope of action by acknowledging the fact that we cannot uh, focus like we did in the MDG era only on taps and latrines. Uh, we need to look into how these are integrated uh, with um, the broader water agenda and, and now with the other targets of six point, uh, well, the other six. Um, quickly, one minute, Sitali, then Paul and Angie is telling me that I need to finish. Good, so Sitali, one minute, please. Yes, very quickly. So in terms of support, uh, the, one of the questions that Katarina was mentioning, we're supporting some partners, um, some uh, constituencies such as the civil society to participate in the meeting, but there are also several others that will be going to New York um, because we'll also be having a steering committee meeting there, so they will be part of the process as well. We worked also on the regional um, uh, processes. We, we participated in Latin America and also in Africa in some of the regional conversations there. I think you're right about sort of how can we strengthen this collaboration with different um, RECs, the regional economic communities going forward. Um, that's definitely part of the plan. We do have a regional roadmaps for, uh, around which we're working, uh, developing regional work plans this year. So hopefully this will all come together and we will then uh, be mutually reinforcing. Katarina, I think I will end here just looking at time. Please. Uh, Paul, over to you. Yeah, just to, just to uh, kind of uh, starting with what Katarina said about SD, the SDG, the water SDG. One thing we will be doing also in the interactive dialogue, and we need to think about in the meeting as a whole, is to make the connections between sectors, not just within the water sector, but especially, obviously, I've got a particular interest in 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 the connections between water and health. But there's so many others as well, and that's also a, a, a golden opportunity to reinforce some of those linkages in the active dialogue. Back to you, Katerina. Thanks. Thank you so much, Paul. And now we need to rush uh, to the closing uh, of this uh, uh, of this webinar, and it's my great pleasure. Maybe we show the next slide. It's my great pleasure. Sorry if there are questions that remained unanswered. It's my great pleasure to hand over to our friend and colleague Leslie Porris, who is the coordinator uh, of the uh, coordinator of the Global Water Leadership at the Global Water Partnership. Uh, Leslie, over to you. And thanks so much for that. I know it's definitely a mouthful, Katerina. Um, I'm also alongside Paul Deverell, the co-chair of the High Level Political Dialogue Working Group here at SWA. So, I mean, it's 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 a challenge to summarize everything. It's a breadth of information that we've all received just now from a whole host of people. And actually, what I was reflecting when I was really listening and taking in all of this information is how hard and how how many different organizations and how many different people have been working hard to put this together. 
And we've also heard from Evita about the unprecedented um, enthusiasm for this event and, and really sort of how the water community is really sort of surging um, to turn the, to really ensure that we hold an event that is actually this watershed moment that really sets the stage for, for further momentum and it's not a standalone event. Um, it's a lot of information to wrap our heads around and uh, the information is just going to keep coming in and I think we all have to be prepared to just sort of receive, keep our eyes and ears open um, and communicate with each other when we do learn new things, because this is this is absolutely a process. It's it's not going to slow down between now and March, right? So um, so again, I want to just thank everybody. Thanks also to SWA. Um, so much of my information and understanding of what is happening right now is because this team at the Secretariat has really put forth this effort to understand and serve as that communication node for all of us, right? They're really serving us all. Um, and so I want to thank you team for, for your hard work on doing this um, and consistently pulling together so many different resources so we can all stay informed, so we can all be there and make sure we're contributing to this event being the success that we all envisage. So thank you very much to everybody. Um, I, I we we heard it's in the chats. A lot, this all of this information will be available um, very soon on the SWA site. So please refer back to it. Please share it with everyone um, in your world, and make sure that we're all continuing to stay as updated as possible. Um, I don't think there's much more to say to that. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias a ti, uh, Leslie, también. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, too. And thank you, everyone, for having participated in this webinar. You have the names of our colleagues. Many of you already know them. They are uh, whether the uh, regional coordinators for Africa, Middle East and North Africa, Asia and LATAM, uh, or they're the people providing support to these civil society organizations or to other entities and groups. Please do not hesitate to write to us if you have any further questions and if you think that we can help you with anything. It will be a pleasure to meet up with all of you who will be attending the sessions in New York. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your interest. Have a great day ahead, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Now in English. Thanks, everyone. Muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias a ti también, Evita. And thanks to you too, Evita. <laughs>